Voters in Ottawa County are choosing from dozens of candidates who want to serve on the County Board of Commissioners. That includes many Ottawa impact candidates who took control of the board in 2022. Every commissioner is up for re-election. Several affiliated with the Conservative Political Action Group have a primary challenge. 33 candidates are running across 11 districts for a spot on the county board. So here we go. In District 1, incumbent Gretchen Cosby is running against fellow Republican Jim Barry. Whoever wins this will face uncontested Democrat Danielle Smith in November. In the 2nd District, Lucy Ebel is facing off with Jordan Dritzma. Whoever wins will face Christian Kleigens in this one. Still waiting on some numbers to come in there. In District 5, Ottawa County Board Chair Joe Moss being challenged for his seat by uh, his own mayor. Hudsonville Mayor Mark Northrop. The winner there will face uncontested Democratic candidate John Rabideau. In District 6, looks like we're still waiting for some numbers to come in. Kendra Winslow is looking to stay on the Board of Commissioners. She is facing off against Sean Half. Uh, the winner will take on uncontested Democrat Michelle Dillman there. For District 7, Rachel Atwood, a member of the Ottawa Impact Group, facing off against John Teeples, who describes himself as a traditional Republican. No numbers in on this race yet. Again, whoever wins will face the uncontested Democrat, Heather Majestic. And Vice Chairperson Sylvia Rohde is looking to stay on the county board. She is running against David Morin for the District 8 seat. Whoever wins the Republican primary will take on Democrat Rebecca Patrick. In District 9, former Commissioner Phil Kyers seeking another term. He's running against Roger Belknap, who is backed by Ottawa Impact. Whoever wins will face uncontested Democrat Angela Stanford Butler. Douglas Van Binnicom is running against fellow Democrat Oliver Champagne in the 10th District. Whoever wins will face off against the person who wins Republican election for the district, Brian. No numbers in there and no numbers in here. They, this race uh, is against Josh Brugger and Jason Court. Brugger the, has the support of the current District 10 Commissioner Roger Bergman who is retiring. And in the 11th district, incumbent Allison Miedema has two challengers for her seat, Sarah Bejama and Richard Van Dopp. Whoever wins will face uncontested Democrat Keith Cortate. And Allison there leading right now at 52%. The big question is, will Ottawa Impact maintain a majority of the board? News aides Kyle Mitchell has been following this race and is live at the Ottawa County Clerk's Office, Kyle. Amber, we're starting to see some of those results come in, but it's too early to say how auto impact backed candidates will do tonight. Um, but we have seen a lot of interest in this race. Now, let me bring in the county clerk, Justin Roebuck. Um, Justin, a lot of interest even on looking at the results on the website. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about that. At least initially, you guys kind of had to go to your backup plan, at least getting those results out to the public. Yeah, absolutely. All the stress testing that we did uh, in the previous couple of weeks, uh, you know, was evidently not enough for the interest that hit our site immediately, basically after our initial results posted. Uh, and so we do obviously have a backup plan, and that backup is up and functioning right now. Uh, just not quite as pretty as the normal website results are, uh, but certainly those details are there. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen a number of precincts already reporting, not entirely reporting, though, because there are a lot of absentee uh, precincts that are still uh, yet to come in. But we've got about over 40, uh, just as I stepped out here earlier, uh, that have already come into the office. So 40 out of 103 precincts is a pretty pretty good showing for this time of the night, and results are obviously continuing to be delivered here uh, securely under, uh, under seal by our team. So the counting process you're saying is going well, it was just the demand to look at those results as you start to publish them. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing, no issues with accounting, no issues with the, you know, importing of that information that's come in from the precincts that have obviously been busy throughout the day. Uh, literally a website uh, issue uh, basically due to the stress or the volume initially on that server. So the, uh, the original, the normal website server uh, does take more bandwidth, obviously, than a PDF. And so that's what we're running into right now and hoping to get that up soon. But either way, the results that you see right now on that PDF report are accurate. In terms of the turnout, what are you seeing this year? You know, there's these, you can vote in person, you can vote early, 
you can vote absentee for no reason right. absentee. What are you seeing in terms of that turnout, how that compares to previous uh, primary elections? Yeah, I think it's a good point. Voters have more options than ever before to cast a ballot in this August primary than they have in any other. Uh, absentee numbers were up by about 6,000 or so from over, over last uh, cycle. So August of 2022, we had about 35,000 absentees. This cycle, we had a little over 41,000 absentee ballots returned. So that's pretty strong. And obviously, we'll see where we're at with the in-precinct uh, election day results very shortly. Um, but our early voting numbers also doubled from February. So we had about 1,500 people take advantage of early voting in February. And uh, in, in the previous nine days, we had uh, about 2,800, 2,862 voters early voting, which is still, you know, it's a small number compared to the grand total, but it's obviously increasing. Okay, Justin, thank you so much. I appreciate that, and we'll send it back to the studio.